nightmare crawled through my window a few minutes after two in the morning. I'm sure he never made a sound, but I knew he was there. Or rather, I knew something was there. Something dangerous. You come with me. Where? You come. I gotta get dressed. I'll need both hands. Our destination lay six miles north of the city limits on the bottom of a flat, shallow valley. A sign posted at the highway turnoff read, Temple of Peace and Meditation. At the tall gates leading to the temple grounds, another sign read, Private Property. Trespassers will be prosecuted. I had heard of the place and the proprietor who opened his gates to all who were gullible enough and had the necessary bank account to afford it. But until that moment, I had never been inside. She's quite lovely, isn't she? May I introduce myself? Mr. Gunn, I am Aben Unescu. Welcome to our humble temple of peace and meditation. You sent for me? Please. Mr. Gunn, I understand you are a man of many talents and wide acquaintance. I know a few people. I would like you to locate someone for me. A friend? A thief. Over $200,000 in donations have been taken from the temple, stolen by my trusted assistant. His name? The lady in the portrait. The funds were in safekeeping. Joanna and I were the only persons who had access to them. When did she disappear? Last week. I held hope that perhaps she would return to us. I sought forgiveness for her in meditation. By her act, she has desecrated the sacred duty. She's shattered the very tenets of the philosophy. How long have you known Joanna? She came to us almost five years ago. Any relatives? Not to my knowledge. What about friends? We were her friends. In other words, you want me to find a girl that could be anywhere. It's a large world, Mr. Unescu. Would you accept a thousand dollars? If I find Joanna and return her to you with the stolen funds, I would be greatly in your debt. <laughs> There's no need for you getting in debt, Mr. Unescu. I'm sure we could settle on a figure right now. Shall we say a thousand dollars now, and uh, an additional two thousand when you find Joanna and the money? What's your full name? Joanna Lund. This might be a long trip. Whatever expenses you may require, I'll be perfectly prepared to pay for them. Yes, Clarence? Lieutenant Jacoby. Oh, no. I'm getting a little tired of this. Maybe if you got more rest, Lieutenant. Of course you two gentlemen would know one another. Lieutenant Jacoby, it's been some time since you've honored me with your presence. You know a man by the name of David Bryce? Yes, I know him. He was found in his apartment this evening, hanged. He had a card in his pocket showing him to be a member of your cult. We are not a cult, Lieutenant Jacoby. We are a cosmic oneness. Mr. Bryce was one of us. You know any reason why he should want to take his own life? Uh, Mr. Bryce was rather a strange sort, given to fits of deep depression. What was he depressed about? Well, that's hard to say. He turned to the philosophy, but it is my opinion that he never reached the exalted level of absolute receptivity. Then you feel he was the type of person who would commit suicide? 
I am appalled, Lieutenant, but hardly surprised. Now that we're all here together, maybe I should get your version. I don't have one. You didn't know, Bryce? Until a half an hour ago, I didn't even know Mr. Unescu. Then what are you doing here? Learning about the philosophy. Uh, Mr. Gunn and I were discussing a business transaction. It has nothing to do with your investigation. There's nothing more you can tell me about Bryce? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, if I think of anything, I'll be glad to call you. Sure. You want a lift? Hmm. I'll, uh, I'll keep in touch. May tranquility be your companion. One of the smoothest con artists I've run across in a long time. Would I be hitting a sore spot if I asked you why you haven't picked him up? You think he'd be running around loose if I had any evidence? I need a complaint from some indignant citizen. If the members of his happy little flock are too tranquil to open their mouths, more money than good sense. Do you know Joanna Lund? Never heard of her. How long do you think it'll take you to get Unescu? Why? I've got to find a Joanna Lund. If I do, he owes me $2,000. I'd like to collect it before he has to spend it all on a good lawyer. Don't take too long finding her. It was a fair assumption that a thief even a beautiful thief with $100,000 would seek her future as far away from her past as she could get. I started making inquiries. I dropped the word in a dozen back rooms and dark cellars, and by the following night, I had my first lead. It took me to a small photography studio on the east side. The owner, who specialized in taking passport photos and bribes, provided me with my next step. Two the next afternoon, Paris time, I looked down at the first of many stops on the long trail that would, I hoped, eventually lead me to Joanna Lund and the $100,000. It took me four days to locate the little hotel on the left bank where she had last stayed. And all the way, I was followed. Ah, we. Oui. She checked out three days ago. Oh. Spain and finally ended in a small town near the border. If my information was correct, Joanna was there. I spent two days watching and waiting. And then one afternoon, there she was. I don't think I'll ever forget it. It's hard to explain now what I felt in that first split second I saw her. Beautiful, yes, but more than that. Something very special. I was almost sorry I had found it. no reason why we should continue this conversation. I have that feeling I'm not doing so well. I have the same feeling. Maybe if I backed up and started again. Why don't you do that with the next girl that comes in the bar? It was worth a try. I spent the rest of the afternoon in my hotel room, 
trying to figure my next move. I was getting nowhere when suddenly, walking alone, the late sun shining in her hair, there she was again. I remember thinking how she'd turned me down and my reaction at the time. I'd been turned down before, but it was the first time I'd felt good about it. I left the hotel and started to wander. Do you have a light? I'm relieved. Why? You cut me up so good in the bar, I haven't quite recovered. Maybe you give up too easily. I just wanted to meet you. Things like that happen or they don't. If you work at it, it uh, just gets clumsy. I don't know whether to be flattered or not. Please, be flattered. What now? Introduction. Joanna Lund. Very pretty. Peter Gunn. But no comments required. Now I'm relieved. And you smile. You don't have much trouble with women, do you, Mr. Gunn? Everyone has trouble with women. I find my biggest problems with the ones that call me Mr. Gunn. Would you like to buy me that drink now, Pete? You did it again. I thought everyone smiled now and then. Why the big revelation when I do it? A rare smile. That's a good line. It's not a line. Not really. Just a little? Yeah. Just a little around the edges. At least you're honest. At the very least. Why did you decide to come to Spain? Oh, I don't know. I had a dream. Dreams can be elusive. Yes, I know. Disappointed? I don't know. Well, Spain's a frame of mind. It can be very friendly if you just give it a chance. You've been reading travel folders. I wanted to be sure I got my money's worth. And have you? I haven't tried yet. Why don't you help me? Oh, I think you can find your way around. Oh, I get lost easily. No sense of direction. What you need is a guide. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Why don't you see the hotel clerk? I'd rather see you. I'm not qualified. Well, maybe I can show you around. What about your sense of direction? It improves with companionship. I'm afraid we'd get lost. Well, somebody will find us sooner or later. It might be too late. For what? It's already tomorrow. Should be a nice day. I've got to go. Why? A reliable guide always gets the proper amount of rest. We were together for a week. Seven wonderful days. We saw part of Spain and we got to know each other. Knowing Joanna was a rare experience. She was warm, bright, full of living. And there was a kind of beautiful basic honesty about her. There were times when I thought about UNESCO and the $100,000. I could have sent a wire, made a phone call, and that would have been the end of it. But I didn't. And every day that passed, I knew more and more that I never would. I wasn't so sure of the alternative. I couldn't believe that she'd taken the money, but then why had UNESCO hired me to find her? Certainly she'd known UNESCO, and 
more certainly, it wasn't just a casual relationship. One thing was sure, sooner or later, I'd have to tell her the real reason I'd come to Spain. And I had a hunch there was a good chance she knew already. Pete. Hmm? The time has come. The walrus said. Tell me something. What? How much did Arben pay you to find me? How'd you find out? Oh, I guess I've known all along. In the beginning, I thought of running. What changed your mind? Don't you know? I guess I do. Answer one question. If I can. The money. What money? $200,000. <laughs> he told you I stole $200,000? Yeah. It's not true. I won't go into the details of my relationship with Arben. He wouldn't like it. What you don't like, I don't like. He considered me a possession. He's a man that gives up nothing until he wants to. And David Bryce? What about David? Then you knew him. Knew him? He's dead. Hanged himself. Oh. What? Oh, no. David wouldn't do that. You must have known him pretty well. He was a very good friend. And you were going to meet him here? Yes. Halfway around the world. That's very friendly. Good night. Joanna? Good evening, Mr. Gunn. Do you um, often enter people's apartments in this fashion? Some people's apartments. Oh. Of course, I'm delighted to see you. Please. No, no, let's don't go through that bit again. This time, let's try being impolite to one another. I don't believe I understand. You will. Did you find Joanna? Was it worth having her killed? Killed? Did you get the money? You talk in riddles, Mr. Gunn. You know, you should hire yourself a new assassin. When it comes to hanging people, Clarence is a little careless. Is he? Mm. He hangs them just a little bit too high. Joanna's feet were a good 12 inches above that chair. People don't commit suicide when they can't reach the rope. Why, Clarence? It would take a man that tall with considerable strength to do the job. 
You're an observant man, Mr. Gunn. Hmm. If his brains matched his size, you might have gotten away with it. He probably made the same mistake with David Bryce. Only no one noticed it. I have no regrets. You just killed her because you couldn't have her. She died for several reasons, aside from the money. She told me she didn't take the money. And you believed her? Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> of course you believed her. Just as I believed her at first. Like David Bryce believed her. Actually, Bryce was the real thief. Joanna only took money. Bryce took Joanna. So you killed him. And when you couldn't find her, you hired someone that could. You just had the fat little man follow me. Fat little man? Hmm. He wasn't your man? Hmm? I followed you, Mr. Gunn. And when you found Joanna, I simply sent for Clarence and took the next plane home. But this, uh, fat little man, as you call him, he interests me. He was there, UNESCO, all the way. Oh, it's worth looking into. I don't think you're going to be looking into anything for quite some time. You owe me $2,000 and the state about 100 years, if you're lucky. I'll take mine first. It's unfortunate for you, Mr. Gunn, that I shall have to pay neither. Not here. We've had a long trip. Jacoby said it would probably turn out that way. He's a big one. I'm from Central Division Traffic. He said you'd probably spot anybody from his precinct. Sergeant Key. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks, Jacoby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 